Hi folks, so last month Amazon rolled out a new user interface for Fire TV, bringing with it some new features and a whole new look, and we wrote about our impressions at the time, which you can find linked down below in the video description, and this week we're bringing you the video version of that hands-on time, so we're going to talk about Amazon's new Fire TV user experience. Now the company sent over a sizable care package of sorts, and at the heart of that big box was a Fire TV stick for us to check out what's new. So if you're curious about what the new menus and features can offer, or if you happen to get a new Fire TV Stick or Fire TV Stick Lite during the holidays and want to familiarize yourself, well, I hope this helps. These are five things you should know about the new Fire TV experience. Number one, a fresh coat of paint. Okay, first things first, Amazon's calling this new update a new Fire TV experience. And what they mean by that is essentially that the menus, interface, navigation, and other aspects of using a Fire TV have changed, sometimes to a significant degree. According to the company, the goal with this update was to make things more personalized, faster, and simpler to use. If you're used to the previous version of the Fire TV interface, well, these changes should be pretty apparent right from the start. Your first clue that something's different is the new startup animation, actually. It kind of serves as your first hint that Amazon's aiming for some visual overhauls in this latest update. And once you do get to the main menu itself, it's pretty obvious Amazon was aiming to freshen things up a bit. First off, the main navigation bar is now in the middle of the screen with a carousel of content options and other teaser info taking up the top half of the screen. And the section below the nav bar is now home to various rows of content suggestions depending on which section of the app you're in. Number two, exploring the new Fire TV interface. Okay, let's start in the most obvious spot, the home section. And it's here where you'll find a row of suggested content called Next Up for you. Now the actual content and suggestions here depend on which profile is loaded, and you can have up to six per account. Amazon says those recommendations will improve over time as you consume more and more content and feed more info into their algorithms. We loaded up a personal profile that's used for everyday streaming, and the recommendations included Thor, Mission Impossible Fallout, and Iron Man 2. Not bad guesses considering the profile in use, but it'll be interesting to see how much more refined and successful these suggestions get over time. Also, from that centrally located nav bar, you can use your remote arrow buttons to move in different directions. Moving left or right will take you to other sections, like your library or the find area, Pressing up on your remote gives that upper area more screen real estate and you'll be treated to full screen previews and teasers. While we're discussing the upper screen section, one of the choices we saw while we were filming was the option to tour the new Fire TV update. Now that might be a good starting point while you're here to give you a better idea of what's new and what's moved around a bit. Meanwhile, in the other direction, pressing down from the nav bar shifts the menus back to the top of the screen and gives you more room to explore those rows of content in each section. That bottom section changes depending on where you are in the app. In the home section, you'll see the next up for you row we talked about earlier. Elsewhere, you might also see sponsored suggestions, recently watched shows and movies, and various category options. Now that layout changes if you, say, move to the find section. If you do that, the lower half transforms to display colorful tiles for categories like free, movies, and TV shows. And below those, you'll see smaller tiles for specific genres like action movies, sci-fi, horror, and more. And yes, since this is the find section, you'll also have the option of conducting searches for specific content. And as suggested by the microphone icon, you can use your voice for those searches as well. The next major area is the live section, which offers up live streaming options for movies and TV shows. For instance, you can check out live programming on Amazon's own IMDb TV. And you have other options available depending on which live TV streaming services you're currently subscribed to. There's also a guide view that gives you that familiar live TV grid so you can see what's currently playing on various channels. And by the way, in addition to those IMDV TV options, the Fire TV interface also lets you access live content via a Fire TV recast if you have one of those as well. And besides those sections, the main navbar also features an area dedicated to customizable tiles for apps and streaming services. You can also choose to view all your apps and channels and select your favorites to see on the navbar itself. And then on the far right is the settings menu. And as you might expect, this section also gets a visual reorg. Now the settings submenus show up as tiles in the bottom half of the screen, similar in layout to content rows you'd see in other areas of the app. You'll see options like notifications, network, my Fire TV, and more. 
and honestly having them appear in a layout that mimics the other main menu areas adds a nice bit of consistency to things, at least in our opinion. Number three, Alexa lends a hand. In addition to the facelift, Amazon says this new Fire TV interface features better integration with Alexa, the company's own virtual assistant. Amazon even sent over an Echo Dot smart speaker so we could test out those voice features ourselves. Setting up the little speaker orb was pretty simple, and then pairing it with the supplied Fire TV stick was also easy enough with the Alexa app on our iPhone. With your voice, you can use Alexa to move around in the menus, conduct searches, change between different profiles, and more. In our use, we noticed about a second or two of delay between saying a command and having that acknowledged and reflected on screen. We told Alexa to head to the home menu, and a few seconds later, it did just that. We also searched for movies featuring specific actors, and again, after a few seconds of delay, we got a list of relevant search results. And when those search results were up on screen, we had the option of using our voice to dig deeper by scrolling around or selecting specific tiles. In some areas, the interface adds numbers to on-screen rows or tiles, so you can still continue using your voice by saying things like select number two to play whatever the second on-screen option was at the time. Of course, there's a learning curve here, and not everything is quite as intuitive. One time we asked Alexa for the YouTube app and got a landing page where we could press a button to download the app. Saying Alexa download did exactly nothing, but we tried again with Alexa select, which triggered the on-screen button to start downloading the YouTube app. Overall, it's a pretty handy way of navigating the Fire TV interface if voice commands are more accessible or if you don't have the remote control handy. Number four, overall performance. Now, naturally, if a company is gonna send us a streaming device, we're of course gonna put it through our usual suite of performance tests, and that's the case here as well. So if you haven't seen our earlier videos, these tests consist of loading up a series of apps in a specific order to see how quickly the device, or in this case, the new software, can get those apps up and running. Now, we've already reviewed the current Fire TV Stick alongside the very similar Fire TV Stick Lite, so in these tests, our goal is to see what, if any improvements, the new user interface can bring to the table. And to test that, we'll be loading up the following apps, Netflix, and then YouTube, and of course Prime Video, then Disney+, Plus, Hulu, ESPN, Pluto TV, Sling TV, and then Crunchyroll. And then we'll bring up Netflix one more time to see if it fires up any faster the second time through. Now the last time we tested a software update like this, it was Roku's OS 9.4 late last year. And with that update, we actually saw improvements in loading streaming apps on the same hardware. To be clear though, Amazon is not making similar performance improvement claims here, but we're still curious how the new user interface performs. So what did we learn? Well, first off, here's how the current Fire TV stick fared during our original review. Now, as a reminder, this was running the earlier version of the Fire TV Stick software, and yes, the various apps themselves have likely all seen some sort of updates in the meantime. But as a reference point, this'll do. And how does the same hardware perform with the new Fire TV user interface installed? Well, see for yourself. As you can see, some apps load faster, some stay the same, and others take a little longer. Again, that may have more to do with individual app updates, but overall, it's around 6% slower across our app suite. For what it's worth, that's still much, much faster than the 2019 era Fire TV Stick, so it's nice to know the fancier user interface isn't bogging down performance to a huge degree. Number five, a note on availability. Okay, really quick here, as we mentioned when the update was first announced, you'll see it first on the new Fire TV Stick, also known as the third gen Fire TV Stick, as well as the Fire TV Stick Lite. And Amazon says as of the recording of this video, all third gen Fire TV Sticks and Fire TV Stick Lite users should have access to the update by now. As for when other devices should see the update, well, the company says that's expected early this year, so stay tuned for that. Wrapping it all up. So there you go, that's our extended look at Amazon's new Fire TV user interface. And if you've used it already, what do you think so far? Are you a fan of the new visual look or the Alexa integrations? Anything you missed from the earlier versions, feel free to share with us down below in the comments section. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, yes, as usual, I must make my usual appeal to please consider those like and subscribe buttons down below. We publish a wide variety of content on this channel, including live Q&As and weekly news roundups every Friday. For now though, my name's Philip Polero. Thanks again for watching. Take care.